Italian boy mafia for today, <laughs> Lorenzo number two. Uh, he's going to tell us all about uh, Homer and Janus and everything in between. Yes. Thank you for the introduction and uh, a slight uh, change of program. So the original uh, presentation was intended to be about Homer 6, but uh, we just decided after seeing the schedule that you know it would make sense just to show what, it, what it's all about with a real example. So the example is going to be Janus, and it's a handover from uh, Lorenzo to me. We do not have those bodies under the clothes, but you probably guessed it. So I'm Lorenzo as well. Uh, QuickSip or QXIP, uh, depending, many people pronounce it differently, is our company and a little bit of a family. Today we have almost a big quorum, so we're conquering the corner down there. A uh, bunch of us. Uh, open source uh, is what we do, what we love. Homer has been, uh, for now many years, our uh, sort of flagship uh, uh, product, but it's not the only one. So uh, we're actually about to change this. So. The platform is really about uh, correlation of packets, correlation of data, and we're going we're about to take it uh, to uh, to a new place. So Homer, up until so far, has been a very SIP-centric uh, application, which wanted to basically keep uh, all of your data. I wanted to decide how it was stored, where it was stored, how it was rotated, and again, it was SIP-centric, so everything was uh, rounding around SIP. Uh, we have changed it, so we decided to move into sort of a stack, so Homer is the H of Epic. Epic is gonna be the new container for the things that were released this year. So again, we're moving from uh, an application that was doing one thing into a, a framework, and uh, the magic word is gonna be correlation. So we wanna make it so that Homer becomes the place uh, where you know uh, correlation can be created between different types of data, maybe hosted in different places, using different technologies, just helping people you know get to what they want. And uh, again, uh, many different features come into play, many different sockets. So uh, this is something for a bigger presentation. But today we'll just go for a real example. So we'll have a few pieces and we'll have a challenge. The challenge is uh, putting to fruit all of the good things that uh, Lorenzo won, I guess, uh, just uh, blessed us with. So the uh, event uh, emitter in, uh, in the Janus Gateway. So just to jump straight into the, uh, the, the challenge, um, of course, this is in relation to the classic commerce. So it's custom everything. So we do not have a, you know, a standardized concept of uh, signaling or you know, uh, even uh, flows of messages. So there's uh, a completely different scenario. We have cascading uh, relations, as Lorenzo just explained. So we have sessions, we have handles, transports, plugins, and each and every one of them emits uh, their own structure uh, with no correlation unless you're using the opaque IDs, of course, which is, I understand, still uh, uh, optional. Uh, so many plugins, no correlation, and a bunch of messages that just uh, arrive and we need to make sense of. So the HEP experiment, uh, as we called it, has been exactly, first of all, to create a new transaction type in Homer to be able to uh, search, serve, and index those messages. So we have a new type. Uh, which is called uh, WebRTC, uh, without too much creativity there yet. And it's a generic type that can be used for all of the, uh, the various gateways out there, as long as I speak JSON, to uh, stream events, uh, data, and so on. Uh, we came up uh, with uh, an internal correlation uh, logic uh, in a similar way as we did for FreeSwitch to, uh, 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 to correlate ESL events and uh, turn them into logs into Homer. So, a new type, and we put to fruit, or at least we hope we did, uh, the, the logic that uh, Lorenzo and the Jones Gateway offer. So uh, internally, we sort of have a, uh, hash tables that keep uh, the consistency between those. So when we uh, decide that a certain session is uh, related to a certain handle, and this handle is related to a plugin, and this plugin might have triggered, uh, might have, have had interaction with a transport, we just put it all together. We keep track of it. Uh, we also um, split this data, so for the purpose of showing you what's new in the platform, of course, we couldn't just keep it in Homer and show you what happens there. So we're gonna have a second part where we show you what else you can do with this data and different ways that you can uh, um, tap into it. So the pieces of uh, the, uh, the experiment today. So that's, of course, there's Janus with the event socket shipping to us all the information that we just seen in the pre previous presentation. There's uh, Homer. In this case, Homer uh, is more than, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, the SIP Homer. So uh, 
a concept that we'll introduce over time. But what we do there is basically we receive uh, those messages. Some of them stay within Homer, so they are leveraging the uh, HEP encapsulation protocol and they're just native to Homer. Others are just switched by Homer, so they're handled, uh, they're uh, inspected, and then they're sent depending on their type and their content to external platforms. Today, we're going to use uh, Elasandra, uh, which is a, a very, very interesting project. The developers are actually sitting in the room and uh, it's something that we decided to bet on. Actually, here uh, in this recipe, we have two forks. Uh, so Elasandra uh, integrates uh, Cassandra and Elasticsearch in ways that I'm not going to try to explain today, but I suggest everybody looking into it if they're uh, into big data and uh, using it in non-standard ways. And uh, Kibi. Kibi is a fork of uh, Kibana by Siren Solutions, which is a company that we also uh, cooperate with, uh, and it's uh, a platform where we moved our efforts in terms of creating reliable plugins that don't really depend on you know the crazy roadmap of uh, yeah, let's say a big company today. So uh, the, let's say the roadmap of Elastic in terms of uh, both the platform and Kibana are you know hard to keep up with if you want to build an application on top. So. This is how uh, we're gonna uh, gamble. So we're gonna use uh, Elasandra, we're gonna use Kibi instead of their originals. With them, we have several advantages. Uh, the primary one in Kibi is uh, provided by the, um, an app that we have uh, ourselves created. It's called Sentinel. And basically it's a free version of uh, the Watcher for uh, Elasticsearch. So it's, it's an application where you can basically have running queries over time. So as soon as you establish an interesting logic, you can just have it run automatically. And this is what we'll use. Now, in terms of Janus meeting Homer and HEP. Uh, so, uh, we said the challenge uh, in this case is to convert uh, meaningful data, so data that can be displayed and can be made useful in Homer, and change its type. So here we have a, just a small table with the, the primary one. This is not everything that we did, but it, it's a good picture. So basically, every time we get a certain event type from Janus, we uh, extract certain correlation data from it, so from uh, different types of events comes different correlation hooks, as we call them, that we can leverage when a different message comes that doesn't have this data, so to provide uh, this back to other messages <laughs> within the same session uh, and be more meaningful or more easier actually to display in Homer without having to do the lookup every time. So it's a little helper. Uh, as Janus does not speak HEP, uh, we use AppPipe, uh, which is now migrating to AppStash, which is a little more complex. It's basically a, a custom application that opens a socket as uh, inside uh, several uh, helpers that can you know, be used to uh, extract specific application information or uh, change a field to something else, transformations, lookups, argument, the original packet. So we convert them to uh, the uh, HEP type that you see in the column. So type 14 is a new one that we have created. It contains just JSON, but it tells Homer how to uh, handle that packet. Type 1 is the normal SIP, so when uh, we receive SIP messages from uh, Janus, we just uh, encapsulate them as such, and then we take transport. So uh, specifically for SIP uh, flows, we do not know who's talking to who unless we go and correlate back to the transport that was attached to the plugin and so on and so forth. So we try to just you know, uh, fill back in some correlation data that we were originally lacking. What happens when we do it is the following. So we transform basically Janus events into uh, um, packets that Homer can understand and search on. So uh, we're using the new type, and here I'm not going to show too much of that, but it's going to be, it's already available on the repository for the adventurous ones that want to try it out. You can search uh, by uh, uh, different parameters. So right now there is a little bit of a hard association between uh, the method was the call ID versus the session ID. It's a work in progress. But the fact is that you can already uh, search and find messages. We can also, using uh, the above method, so correlating the transport with the messages, draft the, uh, the flow uh, that Janus was uh, uh, having between, of course, the, uh, your, the, the user agent, the client, and the server, and then the server talking to, for instance, internal elements or uh, gateways, so on and so forth. And as per anything else in Homer, once you click something, you can see its contents. And I apologize here, it's, it's a little blurry, so you don't really see anything, but I can guarantee you in there is the, for instance, uh, this case is the SDP exchange uh, from uh, a session. So uh, a quick ability to uh, uh, display the stuff in Homer. For those that already use it, we think this is a good plus. So uh, when uh, Janus connects to your already monitored gateway, 
this can be very easy. And uh, as a bonus point, all of the media reports that Janus generates uh, from its media legs, we convert into our uh, pseudo uh, RTCP format, which is a, a JSON, basically a representation of uh, RTCP that you, we use within Homer to convert uh, real RTCP into something we can interpret. In this case, we just adapted uh, the information that we had there. So for each session that you have there, you, we also calculate the MOS and we show you if any. I should have picked a back call with some uh, better charts, but we have some just next. So um, this concludes the Homer part. So what can you take from Janus and display in uh, Homer? And of course here you would also have automatically correlation. So if this uh, was a, a C plugin call that correlated to a SIP call that we monitor with Homer, you would basically see them uh, correlated and you would see the quality and uh, the messages from both. Now, uh, getting it a little more elastic. So uh, we say that Homer and his new Epic uh, uh, stack are not just designed to uh, uh, take the data into hostage. So we want to be a generic correlator. We want to be able for those that already have an infrastructure or a monitoring design to just leverage this uh, as, a, as a plugin. So something that you can use in your flow to categorize, to argument, and to correlate specifically. So um, what we do here is exactly go on and use the second part uh, of the, uh, the project that we mentioned. So we're going to have Homer uh, take every message. So in the previous part, we were only using selected, selected messages that were meaningful or that we could translate. In this case, we're taking everything. And we're not just taking everything that comes from the API, but we also modified the, uh, the client, so Janus uh, JS, which is running in the browser, to also be able to stream uh, data to our uh, car. So we just want to get everything and see what comes out of it. And the effort here is of course to uh, automate some of the logic that Lorenzo uh, was uh, giving us in the previous presentation. So how do we quickly get you know, from a session uh, to its handles, to the plugins that were involved, the media, the transport, and all of that. So down here, just a simple representation. So certain types, uh, and again, they will contain correlation hooks which are injected by Homer. So those are not natively necessarily in each and every one of those packets. They might be inserted just to make it more meaningful or uh, for, to generate a full circle when we look at them. Different uh, indices in Elasticsearch so that we can uh, uh, parallelize our searches and optimize also what we get into memory to do it. What happens? Um, as we said, we're going to throw everything in Kibi, so the next screenshots that you will see are from uh, Kibi, which is a fork of Kibana. When we get everything in there, uh, the uh, primary keys that we're going to look at are exactly the session ID, uh, which you see in the first column, the handle ID, which you cannot read. Then here we have the plugin type, and I wish it could be readable. We have the event type, uh, no, sorry, this is the event type, and that's the uh, event name, I guess. Long story short, uh, we want to find ways where we can uh, visualize the relations between those packages that we're getting. And to do so, uh, I created a few dashboards in Kiwi. So this is just a, a generic look, what's Janus doing? So on the top part, you see the different types of events that are categorized by the, the type of plugin that uh, they were triggered by in this case, or the uniqueness of the session. So. That's just a generic, how over time uh, the system was used. We see the number of uh, sessions that we have received and we see the number of messages. So for those 50 sessions, we received 4,600 something events from uh, Janus and the client combined. Uh, we have a breakdown of the plugins that uh, have, um, uh, were responsible. So some were generated by, of course, the uh, echo test, uh, the video room, uh, C plugin, uh, playback, whatever it is, we would break it down and it would be correlated, let's say top to bottom. Here I also uh, outlined, uh, and again, it's a shame it's not readable, but uh, this is a correlation between three different types of events. So at the bottom, we see an IP which is extracted uh, from a transport transaction uh, going into uh, an establishment uh, with, uh, with Janus and uh, culminating up here with me joining the video room. So up here you see Lorenzo, this is how I got in, and this is my IP. So we already have a quick glance at you know, a single uh, evolution. So how we go from somebody logging into the system in all the way into uh, loading the plugin and joining the, the video room. Media is the most interesting part uh, of what we can get out of it. So in this case, we made a little bit of an experiment. Normally in Homer, you find a session, and then when you open it, you get all the way into the media. This time, we'll do the, the opposite. So 
let's pretend that we're monitoring a Janus gateway this way and we want to look for specific media conditions. So if the jitter spikes out, if there's a lot of packet loss, if something looks wrong uh, from the media perspective, I want to investigate this session and I want to find out who's behind this session, so who triggered it. Uh, on the right side you see uh, the cascading, so again we go always from a session ID uh, into a handle, then we have the type of plugin, and at the bottom we have uh, transactions. So we try to find a vertical relation uh, of all of those events together. So if there's a session and we select, uh, sorry, if we select a specific media session from the system, automatically we get already filtered out uh, where it was belonging to. So we already have an idea of where it was coming from and uh, how much it consumed and so on and so forth. Uh, it gets more interesting when we do the same with the C plugin. So if we load the SIP plugin, we uh, register a SIP account with our gateway, we can generate a call and try to do the same thing. So in this case, I'm looking at a media session that was uh, generated by the, the SIP plugin of Janus. So we can see that there was a, a big drop in between uh, some packet loss and uh, well, a decent GTRF row. Uh, and uh, we want to use this just to track who's behind this session. So it, this session sucked, for whatever reason there was a drop in the middle, I want to find out who the user that was affected by is. So in this case I'm going to use the session ID uh, as a pin filter that you see at the top left in green, and I'm going to move to the tab uh, where we are indexing the SIP, uh, or well actually this is type 64 so it's more than SIP, but it contains all of the SIP messages that Janus would uh, generate. And in this case we can immediately fetch uh, from just starting by the media session, we can find uh, the SIP legs which were uh, related to this media being, uh, um, being exchanged. So we can see where actually was going and uh, all of the SIP messages and of course this would be a hook straight back into Homer so the same information would be available there in a classic way but that's not what we're after. And of course uh, we could jump out and also uh, with the same method, so pinning uh, determinate uh, elements, so the session ID, the handle ID, or specific plugin across uh, the various indices that we're having, we can basically filter out automatically who they belong to. So in this case, once again, jumping into the session and uh, seeing the, uh, the transport IP that was behind uh, all of those uh, transmissions that we've seen. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. So time's up. Uh, we didn't have a bunch of time you know, to show you everything, so in the next episodes we'll talk about open SIPs, uh, uh, capturing everything, we're talking about Homer 6 displaying everything, SS7, ISAP integration in Homer, and so much more. If you're interested, those are the links, those are the thanks. You need another quarter. Yes, well, let's see who the next presenter is and if they take it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.